In order to see politics in action um, in these different case studies we have studied, uh, to see how parties work, we also need to understand how parties get to work, how parties get into the institutions of uh, government. Uh, therefore, in order to talk about party systems and before talking about political ideologies, I will actually discuss uh, electoral systems. First of all, elections, right? What are elections? We all assume that they're important for democracy. Why? Right, because people get a say, I assume you would, you would say. Uh, well, yes, partially. What are then elections, right? The elections, as you might have guessed, are the mechanism through which uh, a citizenry, right? The citizens are represented in government, right? And remember, this is essential for the principle of representative democracy, because we do not live in true democracies, in a sense of uh, democracies as they were practiced and understood, uh, for example, in ancient Greece, where the citizens themselves governed themselves, not their representatives. Instead, we, quote-unquote, send representatives, get to be represented in the institutions of government. And that's through what? Elections. Which, as the name says, we elect, right? We um, make a choice of those who would represent us. But again, that's not as simple as it sounds. Uh, because we don't really make, I mean, uh, make a choice. I don't choose who represent me alone, right? So how is this, how does this happen? How do we transform these various choices, let's say 120 million people in the US uh, voted in the last election or, uh, or thereabouts, how do we transform that into seats in government? Because that's the process. Well, um, the method through which the votes are transformed into positions in government, right? the algorithm which uh, transforms a number of votes into a number of seats, that's what we call an electoral system. Right? So elections being the mechanism of representation of citizens in government, the electoral system is how those, uh, the votes are transformed into seats in government. And this is crucial, because you see, it goes to the heart of democracy. How do you transform this, right, into this? Right? What's, what's the mechanism? And the algorithm here changes, changes this, and this is supposed to represent the will of the people, right? Of course it doesn't, right? Of course it represents the, 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 the result of this mechanism, of transforming the various votes, those who vote, by the way, right, into... Um, a number of people. So you see, parties are crucial. Parties are crucial for any government and for a democratic government because they are the mechanisms that channel the various opinions or even form them, right? Because parties are opinion shapers as much as they're opinion transmitters. We have this again idealized uh, view that, well, you know, they take the opinions from the population and take them to the government. Obviously, that's not the case because you yourself, your opinions are shaped by the parties. You would say, well, I am this, I am that, I believe this, but well, how do you know that? Right? The parties also, as we discussed, have this role of creating options. Right? They don't just you know, pick, go around and ask, well, what options are there, and then let's just choose one. Right? The parties are actually the ones who choose to shape these options. But how many parties there are? How many choices there are? Well, that is, in many ways, decided by the electoral system. Other factors also play a role, but the electoral system is crucial. And remember, parties, the meaning of parties is to, the very goal of parties, the purpose is to get into government. If you don't get into government, if you don't take power, then you will not be able to uh, accomplish your mission, which is what? To govern. To govern. To change the direction in which the society goes, to shape it. Right? And that's the point of parties, right? The parties are formed to move from here to the government, right? To move certain principles, to move certain ideas. And then, according to these ideas, to occupy enough seats in the government so that they can decide over the, the society, right? That's the principle. So, electoral systems are, are essential. And when we talk about electoral systems, how we transform the votes into seats into government, uh, and remember, these seats can be in the legislature, they can be in the executive, depending on the political system, as you saw. This is why I asked you, who, which institution is elected in which political system? As you saw, in parliamentary systems, it's only the parliament that is elected. In presidential or semi-presidential systems, 
it is both the parliament and the executive. So um, here, here we are um, talking about electoral systems, and, and when we talk about electoral systems, we need to take into consideration a few aspects, right? First of all, district. So electoral systems, we have to talk about district, meaning what is the area, right? What is the constituency, right? Uh, that that specific uh, representative actually represents, and that district can be a small part of the entire state, can be a large part of the entire state, or can be the entire state. These are all districts, right? District simply means an actual district. Simply means the area, meaning the population. That's what it means. It's not the physical area, but it's the population that gets to vote to send uh, this representative uh, to, to whatever institution he, he goes as elected. So, um, that's one issue, district. District size, district shape, district um, from which the election actually happens. Uh, then we have seats. How many seats come from one district? Right? In the US, for the House, we have small districts and one seat from each district. But, you know, that's, that's one example. In France, for the presidential elections, the district is the entire country, the entire state, the entire France. That's one district. How many seats? One, right? One president. But there are different uh, other algorithms, but all of these come into the question of setting up an electoral system and the functioning of the electoral system. And then the question is for which branch, so for which institution, does this election happen? But district and seats um, is, is, a, is, a crucial, is a crucial aspect. So let's look at a few major models. Let's look at a few major models. Basically, uh, I'm not going to go through, there, there is a tremendous variety of electoral systems. And uh, actually the one that is used in the US is not necessarily common. But I'm going to give you the two main, uh, two major options. And there are a few that kind of fall in between, that, that diversify this. Just to understand the logic of the various electoral systems. And we will talk about... Uh, downsides and offsides a little bit. So the first one, obviously, let's start with this one because you know it is the winner-take-all system, majoritarian system, majority system. Uh, that that um, well, let's not call it that way. Just winner-take-all system, which is actually the SMD FPP system that you know and is practiced in the U.S. SMD FPP stands for single member district first past the post. Yeah? That's the system used in the US. Right? So this is a winner take all uh, system. Uh, why is it called SMD FPP? Because single member district, which means what? That from each district only one member uh, goes into the um, uh, institution that is elected. So only one seat, right? So a single member district. You have a district and it sends what? It elects one seat, a single member district. First pass the post tells you, tells you how that individual can win, how a candidate can win that seat. So what's the, what's the system? It's very simple, right? You know it. On the ballot box, on the ballot paper, you have different individuals, Jim, Jim, Bob, Michael, Carl, and Frederick, right? And each of them represents a different party. A, B, C, D, E. Right? So, how does the voting go? You vote for one individual, and at the, at the end of the, when the votes are tallied, when the votes are collected, who wins the seat? Well, here's the important part, and I need you to, I want you to pay attention to this. The one who wins the plurality of the votes. Not the majority, but the plurality. And this is why it's called first past the post. It's like a race. Whoever gets first across the line wins, right? Um, 
just because he got a little bit further than the one next to him. Just even if it's one quarter of an inch, it's still the winner, right? Well, that's a problem, and we'll see why. But let's just look at that. So Jim from party A got 35%. Uh, Bill from party B got 30%. Uh, let's just use four parties. Um, Michael from party C got 25% and Carl from party B got 15% and there are other votes, let's say. But let's just stick with this for now. Okay. I, I, let's just make sure that I have the math right. 10%. Okay. Good. Um, so, and that's 100%. So, who wins the vote? Well, clearly, it's going to be Jim for party A, who will win this seat, right, with 35%. And that's the system. That's the system. It's single member district, first past the post. The, the, the one who gets a little bit more than the next one wins the vote. So you're saying, yeah, well, it's obvious, right? This is the one I know. But let's just clarify here. Plurality means most. means more than anyone else. Even if it's just with one vote. Majority, however, is something else. Majority means 50% plus one vote. So, if the system would be based on majority, whoever wins the district would have to get half the votes plus one. One vote, not plus one percent, plus one vote. Right? And that would give him more than everyone else together. Because everyone else together would have... 49% plus something, something, right? So majority means that you get that most people in the district, that the majority, not the most, mo the majority of the people in the district, more than half, right? That's the majority, want you. Well, what's the case here? Do more than half of the people want, want the gym for party A? No, only a third. And yet, he gets elected. Okay, but what happens to the other 65%, which is the majority of the district, which is the large pro proportion of the people in the district who don't want Jim from party A. What happens to them? And this is where we get to the problems uh, of, of this electoral system. But let me first show it to you in a different way. Let's say, let's say that in the country you have 10 districts. It's a tiny country. I hope this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 districts. And let's say that from each district, in each district you, said you have this electoral system, which means that the parliament, this is single member district, first past the post, 10 districts. How many seats in the parliament? Single member district, 10 districts, obviously 10 seats in the parliament. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah? It's a tiny country, tiny parliament. There are such parliaments actually. So, single member district first as opposed. Now, let's assume that the same result happens in the same in, in, in every single district. So, party A gets 35% here, 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 and, and throughout. Right? Party B, 30, and so on. Okay, so overall, how many votes will party A receive? Overall, since it got 35% in each of the districts, obviously, it will have, nationally, 35% of the vote. So 35% of the vote of the entire country went to party A because it won 35% in each of the single district. Good. Now, how many seats does A win? Right? Well, does, a, does party A win here? Yes. Yes, 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 and so on and so on and so on. How many seats? 10 seats, which is what? 100%. So there you have it, 35% of the population, 100% of the seats. So a party that represents only a third of the people gets all the seats. And that's the essence of the system in many ways. Right? That is the essence of the system. In the, a single member district first as the post, a, a winner take all uh, situation, what happens is that majorities are exaggerated. That there is no proportionality between the 
percentage of votes and the percentage of seats. But this proportion is inflated, is blown up. And when we look at the UK and some election results there, we'll see how this happens. Right? And what happens to these, to these votes? So in this district, right, we had party A getting 35%, 65% of the people, right? 65% of the people. What happens to their vote? It's wasted. So part of the negatives of this uh, electoral system is there are artificial majorities in the parliament. It creates artificial majorities. Artificial because it do, they do not reflect the majority in the, in the population, but it's because of the electoral system that a smaller percentage here is transformed into a larger percentage here. This is why I said electoral systems are crucial. Are crucial. So artificial majorities, what's another downside of the system? Wasted votes, because these votes are wasted. All these votes mean nothing, because there's only one winner in each, in each district. There's only one winner in each district. Right? Which means that all the rest, pointless. They don't get represented. Those people in the district, they're not represented, the other ones. They're the losers. It's a, it's a part, it's a zero-sum game, this, this, this um, electoral system is, is, is based on a zero-sum game. You either win, you either lose, there's no in-between. Um, third, so this is what is called wasted votes. Because overall, in this situation, if this would be the situation that I described here, 65% of the people are not represented because the entirety of the seats in the, in the parliament are taken by one party. Which represents what? 35%. Um, another negative is that, well, not negative, another consequence is that it creates, as I said, artificial majorities and it pushes towards a two party system. And yes, this is one of the crucial reasons why there are two parties in the US. And why the UK also, until very recently, is, was, maybe will become again, a two party system. It's a two party system which something extraordinary happened in the last election, but it was extraordinary. They had a third party coming. And it was as big as it happening here almost. So, the two-party system is, is built on this principle. Why? Because of all these things, including the wasted votes and so on. What are the positives, though? The positives are, well, because it's based on electing a person, the district knows who this person is, so there's accountability. So accountability is a, a major pro, uh, positive because these individuals are known by their elect electorate and they can hold him accountable or her. Second, um, it, this idea that it creates artificial majorities is actually an advantage. And even the fact that it creates two, two parties could be considered an advantage because it makes governing simpler. It's clear who has the majority. It's usually one party. And that party actually gets the majority of seats because of the electoral system. It's not very democratic, as you can see, because if people don't get to be represented, right? It's a, it's a win-lose, it's a zero-sum game sort of situation, but it, it creates stable majorities. So it's again, it works against uh, fragmentation and tends to create a more unified uh, government. So there are all these positives. And obviously the US, we're using this system, the UK uses uh, this system as well. Now the other major model, so this is winner-take-all, this, this sort of a... This sort of a principle, this sort of a philosophy is one major type of electoral system, one major cluster. And there are variations uh, of every single electoral system, but this is one major type. The other major type is proportional representation. And that's PR. So when you see PR, this is what it means. Unless it means public relations. So, proportional representation, how does this work? Well, it's, it is one district, but it's not single member, it's multi-member district. So each district sends several seats. So from each district come several seats into the uh, parliament, right? And the major principle is here is that the percentage of votes equals the percentage of seats. This is why it's called proportion. So don't be, don't make the usual mistake that many students make, that proportion means that, I, you know, sometimes there are all kinds of explanations that districts, uh, you know, that as many seats go in, as many people are in the district, there are only, I don't know, all kinds of meanings for proportion.
proportional. Proportional representation means that the proportion of votes that a party receives in the population, in the district, is transformed into it's equal with the proportion of seats it will have in the parliament. So let's look at our example. So this is the this is a principle, right? So look, look at our example, right? The, the most simple way to, to show this, let's, let's just look at the example we showed with SMD FTP. The same, the same situation happens. Let's say there are 10 districts with 10 seats each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, one more. 10, 10 districts with 10 seats each. It's a larger country, right? Here's the parliament. So from District 1, go 10 seats, from District 2, 10 seats, total is what? 100 seats, right? But let's say it's, a, let's say it's the same, um, same country, basically, uh, same, same parties and so on. So let's say the results are the same as we explained before. So Party A gets 35%, Party B gets 30%, let's just write it here. So remember, it was Party A, 35%. Party B, 30, Party C, 25, what was it? Party D, um, 10, right? Okay, right? So this is the result of the elections in every single district. Now remember that in, the, in SMD FPP it meant that A won all the seats. Now what will it mean in here? So how does PR work in one district? So let's say this is District 1, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 seats that it produces. Now, when you go to vote, this is how it works. When you go to vote, here's the uh, voting, the ballot. In the, on the ballot, when you go to vote, you will have, not individuals, but you'll have party lists. And each party will list its candidates. Party A, Party B, Party C, Party D, Party E, whatever. So A, B, C, D. So instead of electing one person, because why do parties uh, present um, lists of candidates? Because there's not just one person coming out of this district, but there are 10 seats. So they try to occupy all the 10 seats. So they propose to you 10 candidates for these 10 seats. Candidates that are ordered by the party, so the order is fixed. So who do you vote for? You're going to vote for a party, not for an individual, in the pure PR. So how are then the results calculated? It's very simple. Remember the proportion of votes equals proportion of seats. That's the principle. So, party A got what? 35%? How many seats will it receive out of the 10? Well, 35, let's say uh, that's 4. Party B got 30% uh, um, 30, 30 that's 3. Party C got 25% let's say that's 1, 2, 3, 4, what is it, 3? Yeah, that's 2, and party D got 10% uh, and that's 1, right? 35%, let's say, will translate into 4 of the 10 seats, which is 40% of the seats, right? Um, party B will transform 30% of the seats, uh, the votes into, what, 3 of the 10 seats, right? Party C, 25% of the vote into, let's say, 2 of the seats, and D, 1, right? You always, there's a margin, Whatever. I'm just trying to give you the, the sense of it. The point is that the percentage that each of each party gets here, it will be reflected into the percentage of seats from that district. Nationally, what will it mean? If in all the districts this, these are the results, what percentage of the seats in the parliament will party A receive? If the same principle applies, if the same results happen in each of these districts. In every word throughout the country, in the 10 districts, these are the results. What will be the percentage of the seats? Well, obviously, party A will have 35% of the seats, party B will have 30% of the seats, party C will have 25%, party D will have 10% of the seats, right? So this, this is the same country as we studied before, the, the one with the SMB FEP, but suddenly, in that situation, A had all of the seats, and here, Here's the parliament. It's divided be between four parties. Well, one having 35%, one having 30, one having 25, one having 10. Same country, same results, different parliament. Democracy? Well, you see, this reflects the will of the people. 
So what are the positives of this system? The positives are obviously that there are no wa wasted votes, broadly speaking. There are no wasted votes. Why? Because every single option, if I vote for party B, I can clearly vote for party B. I can even vote for party B even if I know it's a small party. Why? Because I know that my vote will count. My vote will count. So what are the positives? It's that it's a representative system, actually. Talking about representation. So representation, representativity is one of the positives. Another one, it's fair. Right? Everybody's voice gets heard. It's not based on win or lose. It's not a zero-sum game. You win, I win. You might win more, I might win less, but they're all winners to a degree because their voice is heard. But what are the negatives? The negatives are, for example, this. Suddenly, you don't have a clear majority. Why? Because, well, in the population you don't have a clear majority. That's a forced majority that you had previously in the S and the FPP. So what will have to happen here? Well, this is what happens in PR systems, is that parties need to form coalitions. Coalitions. Coalitions are uh, arrangements between different parties to work together and to together form a majority that will ensure uh, control of the government. Why do parties enter coalitions? Because you need to have a majority in the parliament to pass a law and to form the government. Right? That's it. Uh, so that's, that's what happens. Uh, another negative is that, well, remember, a party gives you a choice of 10 people that the party has chosen. And who do you think gets to choose? The party leaders. This is why an SMD FUP system, like the US has, for example, it's easier for individual representatives to be entrepreneurs on their own. I'm going to win my seat, I don't care what the party says. Now, of course it's more complicated, but that's possible, it happens. Here, it's actually the party. Parties are much more centralized because they, it's the party leadership who will de decide who's going to be on the list here, there, and there, and there. So it's, the parties are strengthened the here, while there, it's the individuals who are strengthened. This is why getting votes passed in the Congress, sometimes it's like herding cats, because it is herding cats, because these are straight cats, all of them. They're not bound to each other, but by certain ideas and interests, if they are. Here they're bound because they're part of an organization, they can't really step outside, because then they lose the seat for the next election. Third, and I'm not sure if it's positive or negative, the another consequence, maybe negative, in this case, is that there's less accountability, because you're voting for a party. Not for an individual. So how do you hold accountable Jim here who got in on the third seat? Because you vote, all the others have performed well, but Jim was a failure. Next time when you vote, you're still going to vote for a party and how, what do you know? Jim is again on the list. You don't get to choose. Right? So here's a, you, you do choose a party though. You vote for a party more, for an ideology, for an idea, more than you vote for individuals. So these are some positives and negatives, but notice it's more democratic. Yeah? Uh, there are variations of the PR, and the major variation, many, but the major variation is regards the, your choice. And here's a, here's a, this is what I'm saying, it's not, you know, I just mentioned a negative, but how about if that negative can actually be uh, um, dealt with? So here's the, here are the two uh, versions. There is closed PR, so closed PR, and that means that the list that you get, the individuals are numbered and put on the list by the party and you just vote for the list. That's closed PR. You can't, the box, the list that the party puts forward is closed. But there's also open PR. And in an open PR, there is no hierarchy here. There are 10 names that the party selects, but you get to choose. And you can put, for example, numbers next to each other. This is my first choice, this is my second choice. You can even cross out certain ones in different countries. This is Sweden, if I recall correctly. You can cross out some of them. This Jim, I don't want Jim at all. He, he was terrible. Terrible. So, uh, that's open PR. So you see certain the, the dimension of accountability introduced into the PR. So these are the two major, major dimensions. And... And um, in many ways the dynamic, although not absolute, the dynamic between these two um, models, between these two systems, is the dynamic between, uh, you know, broadly speaking, uh, not necessarily <laughs> perfectly accurate, the dynamic between efficiency and 
representativity. SMD tends to be assumed to be more efficient because it creates stronger, bigger majorities, but it's not representative, it's undemocratic, SMD, FPP in many ways, right? Where is the representation? People see more, more people are not represented than are represented, right? You know, uh, speaking in the abstract. Um, so, efficiency versus democracy, efficiency versus representation. But of course, there are, there are other models in between, and there are ways to deal with this, as, as you saw with the PR, uh, the open PR system. But let me, show, let me give you some other examples, also giving you two major types, just to understand the logic. And let me give you an example that is right in between the two, and combines the, uh, the, the positives and the negative of both. Before that, let me also mention something uh, I omitted to tell you is that in the PR system, in order to, in the proportional representation system, in order to avoid having too much of a fragmentation, say a country is very diverse, ideologically, culturally, whatever, so you would have many, regionally, you would have many groups, many, many opinions, many possibilities, and many parties getting into the parliament, it's, it's going to be so fragmented that you will have, for example, this party that receives 1%, and still gets into the parliament with one seat. So you see, it's very, it becomes very hard to form a coalition with so many parties, uh, some of them tiny. Yeah. So it's most PR systems, actually all PR systems at this point, as far as I know, and I'm sure there there might be some who don't uh, uh, to whom this doesn't apply. But most PR systems today use the threshold, and the threshold is a minimum percentage that the party needs to obtain in a PR election to get into the parliament. So 5% is a typical threshold. So in PR systems, usually you will see threshold 5%, which means that all the parties will get into the parliament according to the votes they have received, 35%, 25%, whatever. But if you get less than 5%, you don't get into the parliament. So it avoids uh, intense fragmentation. It, it avoids extreme. Let's, um, let's then discuss briefly about a system that is in between the PR and the SMD FPP. That's MMPR. And again, always pay attention to the names, right? What's MMPR? Mixed Member Proportional Representation. Mixed Member Proportional Representation. So first of all, you notice that there is a proportional dimension here. And then notice that it's mixed member, which tells you that it's more than one. But what kind of member? Mixed. What could that mean? Well, it's actually a mix between SMD and PR. So this is a this is a system applied, for example, in Germany. So we will look at that briefly uh, next week. But uh, briefly put, when the voter goes to vote in an MMPR, you actually have two votes, not one. So you have a vote that is SMD FTP, which means that you vote in a district that sends one seat. And you have another vote, which is PR, which is for party lists. So you have two votes, which sends, let's say, 10, 10 seats. Well, how does this work? Right? So you vote two. Here you vote for an individual, Bob, and here you vote for a party, C. By the way, Bob can be from party A, and you can vote for one party here, for another party here, here you work for an individual, right? Now notice uh, immediately that the logic is pretty clear, right? The logic is, let's combine uh, the value, what's, let's combine what is good in one system and what is good in the other one. But how does it work? Because notice, it means that you're part of two different districts. What? So, it, it works this way. In Germany, for example, one of your districts, right, is a tiny district that is an SMD FPP. Your other district, the PR district, is larger one. It's formed of several SMD FPP districts, and that's the land in Germany, like you know, a region. Right? And their region sends 10 members. So when you vote in the region with all the other people in the region, all of them will send will vote for parties and will send 10 from that region. And then you have your own district which sends one, and there's another district that sends one as SMD and another district that sends one, and so on and so on. To, to show you differently, the same principle, let's say this is Germany, and 
and here's the parliament, the lower house, the Bundestag. So in the parliament, half of the seats will come from SMD, FTP, and half of the seats will come from PR. Now, the, 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 the German parliament, I don't recall exactly, uh, let's say it's, uh, well, it is actually 360 members, let's say it's 360. Which means that 180 will come from SMB, FVP, and 180 will come from PR. Which means that how many SMB, FVP districts will be? This is single member district, first past the post, right? Single member, each district sends one member, so you will have what? 180 districts. So the country is divided in 180 districts. Okay? But the country is also divided into states. Not states, sorry, provinces, regions in Germany land. And these here will come from the state lists, so to speak. Right? So let's say 10 from here, and well, let's say there are 18 land lands, land, land, uh, it's not 18, but let's say it's 18 and each of them sends 10, right? And that will produce this part. The point is, you get to choose an individual. You also get to choose a party, you get to vote for an ideology, but you also get to vote for Michael here, or whatever his name was, because he's really, really good, right? even if he's from a different party. Right? And there is a threshold usually here too, so that you avoid the very tiny parties, and the threshold in Germany is three SMB seats, a party needs to win three seats in the SMB vote, or 5% in the PR vote nationally to get it. So why is this as MMPR? Because overall, the votes are balanced out for proportionality. Overall, the proportional uh, principle will be effective. Overall, the, 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 the vote received by, by parties in the PR part of the vote will determine their percentage here. Right? But half of the seats come from tiny single member districts, half of the seats come from larger multi member PR districts. And why? So you see, why is this positive? Because you can get to vote the very able guy you know, but you also get to vote for a party. And this combines it because it is representative, there are no wasted votes, it is accountable, right? It creates a proportional thing overall, which means that there are no, you know, it's dem democratic, it's representative, and so on. And very briefly, two other uh, models that somewhat are variations of the models we have seen, but you see how MMPR is sort of right in between the two, and it's very popular because it combines efficiency with, you know, representation. Uh, SMD two ballot or SMD majoritarian, right? Majoritarian. So as you see, this is a variation on the single member district. Right? So it's each district sends one person, but it's a two ballot. What do you mean two ballot? And what do you mean majority? It's very simple. In order to win that seat, right, single member, so you, there's only one seat coming out, right, from each district. So, but in order to win this seat, it's not enough to get the plurality of votes, as in SMB FPP, where you just have to get most, most votes. You have to get 50% plus one. Well, how does this happen? Well, most of the times it doesn't happen. Because from one, there's so many opinions. However, this is why it's called two ballot. Because most of the time it doesn't happen. After the first vote, the first vote, the two candidates who obtained the most votes, so remember, A, candidate Jim from A got 35%, candidate Bill from B, let's say, got 30%, and then 25, 10, whatever. But the, first, the, the ones who get the, the two uh, most votes, like the first two coming out in this race, move on to a second round, second ballot, usually two weeks later, and in the second round, it's only them two that you get to vote. So first there's a, everybody participates in the first round, and the two who come up in top move on to a second round, and here, obviously one of them will get the majority, because you divide the pie into two, one of them will get more than the other. So this is why it forces a 50% as so well. What's the advantage here? Well, the advantage is that you have accountability, right? You know who you elected, Jim or Bob or Mike or whatever, but you also have majority. 
So this, this, this person will actually represent more than half of the people in the district. So, and that's the principle, that's an essential principle of democracy, that you majorities take decisions, sometimes super majorities, sometimes with other caveats, but, so this is one of the advantages. Well, guess where do we see this election happening? In the election for the president of France. Right? And we'll see that when we talk briefly about how that happens. And finally, just to show you another um, example, which is very interesting, and there are many, many variations. But there's the hair plan. Or single transferable vote. Single transferable vote. So again, the names mean something, not this one. You don't know who Mr. Hare was or is. STV is single transferable vote. So how many votes do you have? Single one, but you can transfer it. So how does this work? So since you have one vote, right, you, we can assume that it's for one individual, so you would be right. So again, it's a single member district, right, which produces one seat. But why is it a single uh, transferable vote? When you vote, you get to uh, actually you vote once, right? But you you can uh, specify your first choice, my second choice, my third choice. It depends on the actor. Let's say it's only two choices, so you can specify a first choice and a second choice. Again, there are variations. What does this mean, and why is this important? Who gets the seat? Um, well, actually, the seat, in, in this case, is received by the person who gets, obviously, uh, the most votes, meaning a quota. 